And we are back. We are back, Bumblebees. Episode three with Troy. Whew. From Change Unchained. Bam. You know, I, I had to say it. it like four times in my head to make sure that it was coming out right. I mean, you just read that. It's, it's he's, he's got the gangster lean going on right got now. It. I couldn't see got it. it. Uh, there you thank you. <laughs> Conservative Ant being the hot billboard in the building. Thanks, Ant. Yeah, Appreciate and if that. you're still with us at this point, like shout out to you because, yeah. man, this has been a long drive. Well, we're going to push it over three separate weeks so that we can give people a break from episode one to two because there's a lot of topics that were heavy. More bang for your buck for yeah. Troy. Yeah, that's right. Great. Well, that's it. You're we're welcome, America. Trying to make sure we get the most content out of your trip to Florida as well. Hey, yeah. love it down here. Peaches wants to talk to you about homesteading. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Peaches told me yesterday, I really want to start homesteading. Peaches told me two days ago, I really want to start homesteading. Peaches no, it told wasn't. me three days ago, I really want to start apothecary and homesteading. Yes, that, I'd like I to did grow our own that. food and start homesteading. See, I didn't and, say homesteading. <laughs> so this is where it's going to come into, like, it's going to serve you mightily for, what's the name of your... of your The so, garden. Man, you got to have Tiffany on there. Mm -hmm. Things about apothecary. Because these are things that we do around the ranch. I say we, and by we... I mean her. Right. Mm -hmm. And what she teaches the, the the individuals that are with us, like they'll take long walks around our 21 acre property. And for instance, they'll gather a bushel of bone set, which is this growth that we have uh, in abundance on our property and uh, how to how to shed it, how to um, build tinctures out of it that are good for cold and flu. And this is one of like a million things that my wife does. She's like. Mm -hmm. She's like a really cool hot witch. That's dope. She is dope. <laughs> she is dope. I but told Chris this morning that I need to get myself like a fanny pack or something. So we go on, on our dirt bikes. I can gather herbs instead of paying for them. I've heard this dirt. Is dirt bikes. Is this y'all's jam? Okay. Is this just like your couple's Hold thing? Hold on. Let me, I actually started wearing a fanny pack when we ride. And then I upgraded to a backpack because we started collecting all kinds of shit when we ride. <laughs> and it's all for me. <laughs> What are you putting a backpack on a dirt bike ride? Uh, let's see. We have found uh, snail shells. Feathers. Four or five really nice feathers. Rocks. Rocks. Uh, <laughs> rocks. It, it's easy when your woman's into to nature to just take nature and be like, I got you something. Did She's you? like, oh my God, I love you. And I'm like, yes. I know. <laughs> Did you hear about the pocket sands? Uh -uh. Oh, man. <laughs> we were in Nevada in the valley of fire and he's hanging out in the car because we've hit two or three spots he's tired of hiking on, i went off by myself for two miles and i'm walking around and i'm tooting about and i'm looking at all the rocks and there's just very fine orange sand everywhere i'm like this is absolutely gorgeous and i patted my pockets and i was like no the ziploc baggies are in the car <laughs> And see. So, so i <laughs> i got down like a mad woman and started like getting sand into my pocket <laughs> and i heard a group of people coming around the corner like i stood up and i got i was looked like i was just really studying the lines in the rock I was like, that's really nice i was like, i can't have them see me in my natural state <laughs> I'm, I'm curious what was the end game with the sand? where is it it's, it's now in a, in a jar <laughs> with rocks in it that as I found. it should be yeah as it should be she got back in the car and she's like, so I have sand in my pocket. I actually I texted like, him. Forgot your bags, huh? <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. She then was like, I'm glad you don't judge me for having sand in my pocket. I'm like, live your life, babe. I'm, as long as you're happy, I don't care. Did either one of you grow up in the country at all? A farm and homesteading? Kind whatever? of. Mm -mm. Kind, kind of. of. Yeah. My cousin, my cousin and I have family that's got, what are they, 20 acres up there now? Um, and we spent most of our childhood summers working on that farm and building, putting in sprinkler systems and fences and clearing land. We learned how to drive pickup trucks on that farm. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and my dad's side of the family had dairy farms. So I, I did spend a lot of time in the country on farms. Yeah. Um, I hated every fucking minute of it. So I'm a city boy through and through. Born in San Diego. Um, I did go to high school in a small town in Iowa, but in no way, shape, or form um, was I a country boy. And even five to 10 years ago, if you told me, like, I'm going to end up in the sticks in a tiny house and we can get to tiny living and minimalism and all that, like, that was not my goal, my dream, my aspiration. I knew nothing about it. I still know very little. I'm just willing to try. Um, and so I just, I wanted to encourage, like, if this is something that looks intimidating, I can't, let me put it like this. <clears throat> if some 
person came up and said, here's a million dollars and a brand new 4,000 square foot home and it's all paid for. You just have to go and live in the city. I, I, people will say I'm full of shit. I, I promise I would not, I would turn it down to live in my shed. My home, my current home is a shed from Lowe's. It's 200 square feet that we converted into a house. It, nothing is worth more than my mental health and my peace of mind. And when I retired from the military eight months ago and all of the gears that either they weren't spinning for the last 20 years or I had distractions to keep me from thinking about them, like all of those things started turning and I had to focus on them. And it was very overwhelming whether, you know, I'm trying to um, walk through everything I participated in in my 20 years in the military, which that's its own thing. My time in Iraq, Afghanistan, um, you know, and this part is going to get really sad, but I, it's, it's impossible for me to sit here for three hours and not bring it up on my birthday. So my mom took her life back in June. And today is my first birthday where I'm not going to get that phone call that I get. Um, and it was the same every birthday. Uh, my mother would call. She called me Troy boy. She would tell me minute by minute um, her giving birth to me. The fact that it was at Balboa Hospital at 1234 p.m. because Days of Our Lives was on the TV and it was her favorite soap opera. Um, and I didn't get that call today. And it ain't coming before this day ends. Um, but I, I bring that up to say, number one, I, I love you, mom. I love you. And I'm glad that you're at peace. Uh, but working through that since June 16th to today in the atmosphere that I have out on the ranch surrounded by nature where I, I took, I completely turned myself off from the world, from social media, and I built this eight foot by eight foot deck in the middle of our property. And I just cut a pathway to walk to it. And there's no electricity out there. It's got a ice tub bath that I do cold plunges in. Um, but I just sit out there and I meditate each morning. And I can't tell you how good that has been for me that I would not have been afforded that quote unquote luxury living in the city, listening to car horns and your neighbors tell you about their new, whatever, whatever, like construction. My God, it's my, no, my closest neighbors two miles away. Oh, I love that it's bliss. I bet it is. It's, it is, it's bliss. And don't get me wrong. It is very hard work. I live in a shed in the woods on a piece of land that three years ago didn't have power, water, nothing. We've done all this on our own in three years. I wouldn't trade it. You couldn't. You can't give me enough money to leave my current location. And if mental health is something to you and the busyness of day-to-day -day city life uh, is an, an impacts you negatively, I can't encourage you more to attempt this lifestyle uh, earlier than later. I love that for you guys. Yep. That that's amazing to hear. And it's and I watch it impact the people that stay out at the ranch cuz it's most just of, quiet. I mean most of these people are coming from loud, chaos, people, busy, city, lights, mm -hmm. all that shit. And they're coming to cook all grasshoppers, wind in the yeah. trees. We every time a survivor comes out, they get to plant their own fruit tree in the orchard and they tend to it. They have their own garden box in this fenced in area of the property and they get to learn like right now, my wife is teaching, you know, the winter plot. It's God, I'm going to butcher this. I'm sorry, Tiffany. I promise I listen when you're talking to us. You just don't retain it. Check. And you know, <laughs> you got the winter squash and the beans and the certain fruits and vegetables, well, certain vegetables in the garden boxes that grow and she gets to sit there in the quiet and teach about that. And uh, it's, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. And it's what my wife, like my wife, again, will be married 25 years in March. Okay. Been through a lot of shit. 
And this is her, this was her dream. This is, this is, she is in her element. Like when I tell you my, my wife is like the good witch of the North, like that's her, that like, that's who she is. And she sacrificed so much to be a military wife. Very, if you try to picture who I tell you my wife is right now, it's the, I couldn't be more contrarian who she made herself to be for the benefit of my career and what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, the fact that I get to give that to her, and I don't mean that in a me man, me give. The fact that this is something that I have created with her, and this is how we're going to spend our last 30 to 40 years on this planet. I'm very proud of that. I have to pause you. Why Why would you take that statement and turn that into a, a me man, me give her, when you, you are providing a life that she's otherwise would not have had you're not in the military anymore you know has that i'll tell you i'll tell you what it is and it it's me i have become ultra careful on the internet listen i'm not saying that's good bad or indifferent it's just become a trigger response the i protect my wife with everything in me and because of my presence online that hatred has migrated to my spouse. I get that. So what is it I can do to mitigate that? Does it mean I, does it mean that, do I actually think that, like I am proud of that. I am a fucking man and I'm proud of what I've provided for my wife, the end period. However, I also know that I'm sitting on a podcast with 1.2 million followers that is going to generate however many views and there's going to be people that could direct that hatred because people love to get mad over nothing to my wife. So if I have to chink my pride a little bit to, to guard her, so be it. Yeah. I, I don't think it's a pride thing. I, I mean, I guess it is te technically the definition of pride, but I, I don't know. I, I think that you should be, I, I would never downplay that. That's a me thing. I, I my, One of the greatest accomplishments I had was climbing in the bathtub with peaches and going, I don't want you to go to work anymore. And she's like, what? And I was like, even though you work for me, because at the time she was my body piercer at the shop. Yep. I was like, I want you to stay at home. Yeah. She's like, I don't know if I can do that. I'm like, well, then think about it. Come, We can talk about it. We sat in the tub for two and a half hours having a conversation. And the next day we had a little bit more of a conversation. A little day after that, we had another one. And two weeks later, she finally was like, okay, I'm ready to do that. And she could have continued working or I could have asked her to stay at home. And, and though... I didn't give her this life. I, I provide the life that she's able to have. I yep. take fucking huge pride in that. I don't give a fuck what anybody has to say. That's one of my greatest accomplishments. And and I'm with you all the way, but do you give a fuck when people attack your wife? Absolutely. Right. That's and, the that's and, the only time that I have an issue with the, the comments on social media. And that's the only time I have an issue. Yeah. With it. I get incredibly I just... Get it. I I'm ready to go it. scorched earth over over comment. Yeah, it's silly from a nerd who neck beard who probably 40 years old living in his mom's basement and his girlfriend is his right hand. But you and you also have to remember like the overcorrection after my failure as a dad. Yeah, is like I get that too. I turned it into the skid all the way. Like not only am I not going to be this way ever again, I'm going to be the polar opposite on steroids. And so I'm incredibly protective. Mine don't touch. I'll kill you that which is also a good thing yes <laughs> it, it is to, to yeah. me it really fucking is like um, yeah there's no apologies I, I just for that I, I don't i don't know I, I i understand i'm not saying that i don't get it i do understand why you did what you did when you said that just now i don't want you to do that <laughs> own that shit be happy fuck these people that's uh, fair enough okay why are you looking at me like the hotness no no i'm just looking at my husband it, th that that is that is my greatest accomplishment in life I, 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 I have killed myself to get to where I am. And I was the one who was never going to be anything in life. Uh, I have a question. So uh, whose dream? You said it was her dream. Yes. To have the, the ranch. What was your retirement dream? What did you want? I was too short-sighted to even <clears throat> have that. Really? I had no ambition of getting out of the military anytime soon. Like the earliest you can retire is what I did. 20 on the button I had I my plan was to go as long as the Navy would keep me um, by that time I would have been old broken and a pension large enough that it really didn't matter 
So I wasn't thinking about it whatsoever, but I know that in my head, never once did I paint the picture shed in the woods. Yeah. Shed in the woods was never on the docket. And now you're, you're fucking thrilled living out. There. I, I am, I, I could not be happier. So tiny living minimalism and how it b- bled over into our organization. Right. So we learned when we did it for the very first time, the freedom that comes with it, because I, the biggest incentive of living homestead lifestyle and tiny living and minimalism is being debt free. Right. Of which we are completely. I own my vehicles, I own my land, I own my, but you still have to pay taxes on your, yeah, no shit. Everybody always comes out, don't you have to pay taxes? I say, yeah, man, we all do. Uh, but I'm also a disabled veteran after retiring, so I don't because Alabama rocks like that. Um, so living the debt free lifestyle. Is it's so freeing knowing that I don't owe anyone a single cent for anything. Right. Um, and to me, that freedom, that release is worth more than walking into my mansion for me. Right. Um, you, again, you couldn't convince me no matter what, uh, that that is the pathway for me. So anyway, we started living this lifestyle, seeing the freedom that comes with being debt free, living out in nature and we're and we combined it with this here's this missing link that we see for the restoration of survivors and let's combine the two so the other facilities and homes on the burn it down ranch which is what it's called burn it down ranch we i'll tell you why we named it that um are all tiny homes they range from 220 square foot tiny house on wheels to a 340 square foot tiny house that's in the shape of a boot that my wife drew on a piece of scrap paper and our contractor built. That's amazing. It's super cool. And you can go on all of our social media and and we always, we do tours of the tiny homes and what have you. Um, But everybody always thought it's weird because all of our, our merchandise has burn it down and the hashtag on our website and on our social media is burn it down. Um, And so here's where Burn It Down comes from and naming our entire homestead, the Burn It Down Ranch. About 15 years ago, my wife and I were looking at a property in Pensacola. A couple acres had a home on it, right? Whatever the price was, that doesn't matter. Um, But we had to get it inspected. So we paid the inspector and he was a friend and he comes back and he's like, I have some really bad news. Like the property's beautiful. The price is right. The home is infested with termites. And I'm like, like I had all, we had already moved past the buying it part. Like we were already convinced we were going, this is like, and now it's at the point where like, I'll do anything to make this dream a reality. And I was like, what can we do to make for this home to clear? And that way we can get the mortgage and and yada, yada, yada. And his reply was sometimes things are so infested that you have to burn it to the ground and start over. So that stuck with me, him telling me that, because that is how I have felt about the topic of child exploitation, about human trafficking, about the institutions within this country and globally, that hashtags are nice, in human trafficking, hooray. And I want want it to end too. But there are large institutions and large governing entities that my wife and I believe that they're so corrupt, they're so infested, that literally the only way is to burn it all down and start over, which sounds very radical. It's very anarchist type things. Uh, This is what I know. I know that what we have been doing for however long we've been doing it isn't fucking working. That's for and we can't continue. It's insanity. It's insanity to think that the current path that we are on when it comes to combating this, because the numbers keep rising, even with all the awareness. Right. Look at all the awareness. <clears throat> That's wonderful. Yay, awareness. But the action isn't meeting right. the demand. The juice ain't hitting the squeeze whatsoever. So are we just going to keep chasing our tail and going in a circle? Or are we going to burn this bitch to the ground and start with something new? That is how we got to the burning down ranch, the end. You know, there's an added layer to that. Do you there there are so many cases where we hear that the person who committed the crime of unaliving somebody has joined the manhunt for that missing person. <laughs> yes. 
hashtag save the children. How many people are sharing that hashtag? Be like, oh yeah, let's fight for this cause while secretly doing it behind all of that shit. That's either take the action or don't do it. And probably more than you would even think. Mm -hmm. More than, you know, it's it, a lot of the times the most obvious answer is the one that literally is in front of you, you know, Arkham's Razor. Yeah. Um, we've always, there's always this notion, the the white van, the, the free candy, the burly tattooed guy, watch out for him. Man, I'm telling you, three piece suits and ties red flag me to death yeah i bet they do i'm here to help you i'm here to save you <clears throat> i have some sort of uh person in the sky that can is your like careful careful yeah careful careful it, isn't it isn't, magical isn't, elixir. isn't that what reagan said the most scary sentence the government can ever say to you is i'm, I'm here government. to help i'm here to help yep yes from the government i'm here to help so let's not get back to that topic I we agree. did two episodes of that <laughs> do you do raised garden beds or do you guys just plant everything hell yeah raised garden beds it's the only way alabama soil is red clay yeah and you know what you can grow in that nothing nothing, <laughs> nothing man you can use it to dye your t-shirts did you ever see that what okay so i don't know where i saw this at but i saw on a television show somewhere right. that somebody was taking um red hawaiian dirt Throwing it in a washing machine with red white white t shirts, dyeing it to a red color, and then selling it as Hawaiian dyed shirts, and they're making a fucking killing selling t shirts. And they go through like a washer every week or two because it's destroying them. But they're actually are they profiting enough to do that? Obviously, it was on fucking television. This That's you're shaking insane. your head. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I looked it up. yeah, <laughs> they're dyeing shirts with dirt yeah. and calling it Hawaiian tie dye. Are, people are buying it tourists well we need help raising funds so i mean i'll rub some dirt on your freaking polo shirt <laughs> call it a day <laughs> come here let me rub some dirt on you it's 50 bucks you knucklehead. somebody is going to reach out to you and have a dirt fetish i hope so it'll be a log cabin republican <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna get over this bro how is that a thing that cracks me up. And I don't mean that like in a right. mean way. No. Like th that just, it's, it it's, tickles you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It tickles. It does tickle me. That's it does mean. tickle me. But yeah, homesteading uh, did, got way off track there. Not, not in my, not in my bingo card for, for life whatsoever. And I've loved learning uh, how to do cool, self sufficient shit. Like we have a greenhouse and we built our own rainwater capture system that then feeds back into the greenhouse and waters our, our plants. It's this little circular self-serving thing that, you know, two years ago, I fucking put a bucket out. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but learning how to use a pantyhose to filter the, the rainwater from the gutter into these containers that started off as big vegetable oil vats for restaurants. Those are the black ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. They don't start off that way, but you, you either tarp them or you spray paint them black. So it deters the sunlight. So mold and, and all that stuff doesn't grow inside the things and just turn the knob and gravity fed hoses will run to the plants and hands free. So before you guys started this, did you have any construction experience at all? Or has this all just been trial and error while? Bo. Yeah? Total trial and error. The most that I ever did was I got, I, I mean, I'm not going to say I didn't do any type of construction. Okay. Not construction. Woodworking. You know those those T posts that you see, a lot of military folks will have them that you hang your flak jacket on. It's, you know, a wooden T and then their Kevlar helmet sits on mm -hmm. top. I made, I loved making those and embedding like those like challenge coins in them to for customize them for different people. So I got creative in woodworking and built a shit ton of those when I was stationed in Colorado. That is the beginning and the end of my experience with any of this stuff. It is Tiffany and I are living life by the seat of our pants. I don't know what to, I don't know what I'm doing besides driving home. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I don't have a schedule for Monday. I have things peppered throughout my calendar. Go see Chris and Peaches on my birthday. Mm -hmm. And I think the next thing is there's a human trafficking summit at the University of West Florida on December 11th and Christmas. And everything in between is complete filler, whatever the fuck I want to do. Okay, so 
uh, come back to that. Is it one of those things you just kind of walk around the farm and go, okay, this needs to be done. So you do it or yeah. yeah. So in a way, my, my wife is listening to this currently chuckling. I have a magnetic dry erase board on my fridge. And she writes down what you're going to go do for the day. No. Mm. Oh, I, that's funny. That's <laughs> funny. No, but I will have, I have a to-do list with no timeline for the most part that when I wake up and I find a couple hours of downtime, I'll go peek at the fridge and, oh, uh, I want to trim back the shrubs on our trails have different names that we have cut in. Cause there's, there's, I mean, it's a 21 acre homestead. There's cool hiking trails. There's a small arms range. I'm going to go down and shoot my AR today and zero out my optic or, or whatever. Um, yeah, I'll just find, I'll pick and choose these little things. And one, it keeps me busy. The days are about as unrepetitive as you can get. And, uh, I get a lot accomplished. So, cause I'm not a, living in a tiny house. The one thing you're going to have to know off the jump is you better not like inside. Yeah. Like I am inside two hours a day and that would be, that's, that's the extreme side. Typically I'm up, I'm out unless the weather's bad and I'm out the entire time. I bet your guys' souls are super fulfilled. More, that is a light way of, of putting it. It's very, um, I guess the word that you used was correct. It is very fulfilling. We, on my phone, I have pictures of February, 2021, when my wife and I went out to this property for the first time. And it is dense shrubbery, trees, bush, weeds, down trees. Like it was unattended acreage in South Alabama with nothing, no structure, no power, no water. And it had a little walking trail. Um, and that was it. And now I will look at that and then I'll go stand at the front gate, secured gate of my homestead and just kind of peer over and see the eight cleared acres and the huge yoga meditation deck off to the right in the fenced in garden behind our personal tiny house and then the greenhouse. And then in the landscape in the back is the silhouette of all these little structures poked up out of the landscape of this tiny house village that I know somebody that didn't have a home gets to live there. And I just kind of just pause for a minute. And you're yeah. like, fuck, this is cool. Like, and you guys did that. Like we're really doing something. Yeah. We're really doing something. <clears throat> So you made a comment about the freedom that comes involved in all that. So like uh, I have said on the podcast over and over and over again that having um, freedom comes at financial security because when you've got money, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Right. That's right. So you have no debt. Yep. You guys own your land. Yep. Um, you get to wake up and do the things that you want to do. And it, unless you're t attached to your digital leash, you are in your own little world out there doing whatever the fuck you want to do. That is correct. That is the definition of freedom. To yeah. wake up and go, this is mine. I own it. I can to work on it. I can shoot my gun. I can ride my dirt bike. In my case, I would ride my dirt bike. <laughs> um, but you can do whatever you want to do. And on days that you just want to walk around your po property and drink coffee and, and walk your trails, you can. We do it all the time. There are days that are just arbitrarily hung up with a little pin that's just like, no work, nothing. Nothing. Let's go. Let's go on a walk. Let's go around the trails. Let's go. Let's sit on. We have so our tiny house, right? So you picture a standard shed from Lowe's, and then we have, and that's 200 square feet, and then we have a dog trot deck that connects a 50 square foot additional <laughs> shed that is our master bedroom, and then we built this huge deck on the back, and the amount of hours we spend sitting on this deck on this little cheap lawn furniture staring at sunsets and sunrises and drinking coffee and just kind of talking about life's issues. The, the benefit that it's had for my marriage, like I know I've said earlier, I've been married 25 years. Oh, wow. You guys are doing great way to go. Like that's been, it's been difficult. It has been difficult. Like I've explained to you, like you see who I am. I'm loud. I'm obnoxious. I'm passionate. I'm in your face. My wife, Like, like whatever I am, she is the opposite. And while that is wonderful, 25 years of that has taken 
work. Yeah. But let me make something clear. I fucking love that woman so much. She has put up with a lot of things. I'm a recovered alcoholic. There's been drug addiction. There's been all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> Wars, deployments, children, the things that have happened with our children. Uh, and, you know, here we are in our mid 40s. Um, and I would say we're probably stronger now than ever. You have less distractions because, well, I mean, you obviously are working, but when, yeah. you're, when you're out there, when you're on your homestead, you have less distractions. <clears throat> you guys are not engaging in the rat race that is corporate America. Not even a little. Right. So your time, your quality time is devoted to each other. Like we have a lot of downtime now. We didn't over the last 10 months, but the last 10 months was a shit show because of the podcast. We have a lot of downtime now. But we yeah. spend that time together. She tells me constantly, thank you for wanting to do things with me, which is the weirdest fucking thing for me to hear because she's my best friend. Of course, I want to do things with you. Why would you yeah. say that? But I get it because I know that there are days that I'm in the house and she's five feet from me, but I'm 14 hours into an edit or I'm doing work related things. And even though we're in the same room, kind of having a conversation, my attention is here. Yeah. But when we're in Tennessee or we're driving three hours in a car to go play putt putt golf or watch a movie. That undivided attention is the best part of our fucking relationships. Like uh, everything that we get to do by ourselves is is the shit. So for you to be able to sit outside on your porch drinking coffee, watching sunrises and sunset with your wife, that's the fucking dream. Yes. And that's what most people want. They want that quality time. They just don't know how to verbalize it and they would never take the leap necessary to do what you guys did. And it's that's scary. Ooh. Bro, it was scary. Let, let's not play this off like I was confident in this move. Like we sold 90% of our shit and our dream home. And like I told you my experience with construction. I told you my experience with homesteading, being in the country. And let me, I, I want to walk through how this played out, right? We knew what we, we saw in our mind what we wanted this to be, which is what it is now. This tiny house village, all this stuff. Uh, but this wasn't planned out like in stone. We sold the, we closed selling our dream home that we had in Pensacola on, uh, March 1st, 2021. We had to move out on that day. We had to be gone and we weren't able to close on the land until March 3rd. So we had to get permission from the landowners for that three day buffer to even go and stay on this land that had no cleared areas, no structure, no nothing. We had to borrow an RV for 10 days. Did not have a plan of what our next home was. We had to figure it out in 10 days with raw land. And so we go out there, we find a, a, a guy locally to clear an acre and then went on Facebook Marketplace on day eight and paid uh, $10,000 for this brand new and it had some stuff inside finished and had it delivered on day 10 the day that we had to return the rv still didn't have water or power but we had a roof over our head and so people look at it now and they're like what a success and this is what like it was the amount of god dang hope it no ain't one ever I, sees that it was like the amount of chance was wildly high why? I mean, this could easily be a horrible ending story where we end up getting killed by coyotes in the woods. <laughs> you know, it, it could have easily ended that way. Um, but it didn't. Like we were really, we really persevered through through difficulty, learning how to install septic and the different types of septic and all-in-one washer dryers. You ever seen those things? Like we have that built into a staircase in our tiny house, learning how to live in a tiny house. It's like a huge game of Tetris. My bag of almonds has a place specifically in the tiny house. And if it's not there, it's a mess. Like you have to learn to play Tetris with life. People watch my TikToks and they'll see me in the same five outfits. That's because as a minimalist, like I'm going to, I have five outfits. I have three drawers in a dresser. My wife has the other two. Like when we say that we're minimalists and that we're committed to this lifestyle because it affords us to be able to work within our passion of what we talked about these last two episodes, like I mean it, like this is real. And so that's why the clothes I do have, I like to at least have decent stuff because yeah. I only got five of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have homestead questions for him? 
No, not really. I'm just enjoying listening to things. What, um, so <sighs> nobody ever sees that struggle. They always see the end result and then they hit you with must be nice. Or man, you're so lucky. Oh, I, <laughs> I get that all the time. Shit pisses me off like you wouldn't fucking believe like you have no idea <laughs> like the struggle that this is. Uh, yeah. And it's not like retirement from the military. It's not like we're fine. There's no other income. Yeah. Like we're not financially. <laughs> I We do well because we're debt free. So whatever yeah. income we do have is disposable income. I mean, obviously we have cell phones and what have you and the ta- property taxes where people start screaming. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you can't trade it, bro. And if this ever, if your wife ever gets the itch or you both or collectively, like don't ignore that. Don't ignore as, as much as getting away from keeping up with the Joneses, like every human piece of fiber in you will fight against that. Like once you finally break free of that shit, bro, man, it's, it is incredibly, incredibly freeing. Yeah. We want to buy land in Tennessee. Five, five to 10 acres was the goal. Yeah. I don't want, I don't want something like if, if I got 25, 50 acres and only five of it was cleared and that's what I had to clean and keep up with. Yeah. Fine. If it was 25 acres that I had to keep up with clean and clear, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, I don't want to deal with that shit. But I, I do want to have enough land that the people that I love can live on the land and we can have that community without being in each other's faces. So you that's what you're looking you're looking for, like a family communal that's living. Our, mm-hmm. our end goal. Good for you. I want to have a massive barn with a kitchen in the middle of the land that everybody can get to on a Sunday and that is exactly what my wife wants to do. I want a barn dominium though. I don't want a tiny home. I want a barn dominium. I want something big enough to put my gym in. Yep. Big enough to hold all my dirt bikes. And then like a thousand square foot of living space and like a, a 1500 square foot kitchen. I am kind of, <laughs> I, I am ready to upgrade a little bit. Like <laughs> I don't mind the tiny living, but I, I'm ready. I'm because we have three dogs, two cats and they're all inside all 200 square feet. Like occupying a lot of it. Yeah. Like I'm ready to let's, let's push these walls out a little bit. Yeah. So a barn dominium is, is something I'm interested in as well. To be the move. Mm-hmm. I see my, my thought process behind the 1500 square foot kitchen is it, it would be like the communal kitchen because people could come over and we can eat in the kitchen, like actually big dinner table in yes. the kitchen. But I feel like if we've got that kind of land, I'm going to be physically active a whole lot more than I am now. And I get to eat gravy and biscuits every day. <laughs> That's I like that. That's, <laughs> you, you have thought this out. I have. Yeah, yeah. You thought this out. Her gravy and biscuits are amazing. And then dinner will have be something with mashed potatoes every day. And That's I'll never awesome, get man. We have more eggs than we know what to do with, which is <laughs> why are you smirking. <laughs> I like that. You like my coconut, especially my mashed potatoes. Do you make good biscuits and gravy? Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. That's so good. I kind of want that so stick. <laughs> yeah. We would have had to prepare for that one. Fair enough. We'd have had Fair enough enough. time to know that, 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 that you would have rather had that over steak. We could have invited you over for dinner. I Next time when your wife comes down, we can actually yes. have you guys in the house for dinner. Love it. Now that you've vetted me. Yeah. Smart move. Yeah. Well, we did actually, but. Good. As you <laughs> should. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I, I implore everybody to always do that. I've already got some stuff going. I want gravy and biscuits now. <laughs> I know. It sounds good. It does sound good. That's funny. Uh, man, I, I, I got to be honest. Like the, the lifestyle that you live and what I've seen on TikTok, because I didn't follow your um, organization's account until probably two or three weeks after I had talked to you. Yep. Um, and all of your content is on your TikTok is homesteading content. Yes. Uh, other than the 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 your mom shit, which yeah, is man, super funny to me. By got, the way, yeah, got to get after them. Uh, <laughs> F them trolls, dude. But if you were to cultivate your content solely on the how to homesteading thing, yeah, um, I think that your channel would jump from four hundred thousand to a million in a month or two. You think so? I I do, and and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, I you saw the big van out there? Yes, I I'm kind of jealous. Is that yours? That's mine. It's less We'd than a month old. Be a fantastic surveillance. And it's already got 4,000 miles on it. <laughs> what, from driving to Tennessee all the time? Uh, well, we went to Tennessee and back, and then my cousin took it on a trip and back. And, and it's, it's, but it's, that thing has got more inside space than a, a 10 foot U haul. Yeah, it's the size of my house, bro. Well, it will be the size of one of mine eventually because my retirement dream has always been to own a Winnebago Revel, but that's a 144 inch wheelbase. And yeah. I have a 170 inch wheelbase and we can build it. 
But for the last three days, I have been looking at YouTube videos on how to insulate and how to build the walls. I have somebody that is one of the most handy people I've ever met in my life that can literally handy build man. everything. So I'm like, this is what I want to do. And he's like, okay, we can do that. I'm like, okay, then let's fucking do that. So now wow. I'm like, how do I spend the money to make this like, you know, but I want to build that out so that we have enough room to lay a bed down, put our dirt bikes in and go and explore and maybe do meet and greets or whatever. But that van is going to be a big part of our lives. The reason I brought all of that up is because I have spent probably 30 hours in the last week and a half on content about how to do my van. So for people who have interest in apothecary, homesteading, tinctures, herbalism, any yep. of the stuff that you are doing, rain collection, which is illegal here. Did you know that? In Florida? Yes. It is illegal to collect rainwater <laughs> in this area. So people bring that. When I showed the rainwater collection system uh, on my TikTok, the one we have for our greenhouse, that, that was one of the things that automatically come up. My question, my, my reply to that is, who is following up on that? Uh, like, is there really like rainwater collection cops that are going to deal? Who did that? No, I know, but who was the organization that followed up with her? She got sued. Okay, so this woman, she bought her house, owned it outright. Okay. Had it built so it was 100% green, yep. full solar, full water, retention, the whole nine, and was not even connected to the power grid. They fined her so much money over the course of time that she ended up losing her house, I believe. They took it from her <clears throat> because she was not connected to the power grid and she owed the city like $250,000 in fines because she refused to connect to the Florida power grid. And one of the fines that they got her on was that she was collecting rainwater to solar shower in her house. Her home was 100% green, which is what everyone wants right now. Yep. Green efficiency. Unless you live in Florida, if you get caught collecting rainwater on your property and the city of whatever comes through and sees it, they can cite you for it. You are not allowed to collect rainwater here. That's insane. <clears throat> Fire truck can't hook up to the fire pump. Ensure your safety. I don't need the government to look out for my safety. I, I'm good on that. Isn't that wild? Doesn't that scare the shit it's out of you? 1984. It's wild. I saw that book over there on your bookshelf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that was, you know, that was recommended reading for us in school. It's on a banned book list now. <laughs> no, it isn't. The fuck it's not. It is. It is it is banned where? Uh and it's banned here in Florida. It's banned all over the place. Nineteen eighty four is a banned book. What's going on in y'all state? So is Tom Sawyer. What is going on in Florida? Because from what I heard, this was supposed to be like the free of the free. <clears throat> everything is super well, they, what is going they on? They banned here? those books years ago. Like that's not a new thing. Nineteen eighty four got banned. It, it's had to have been at least 10 years because I asked somebody about that. Like I, I never did my recommended reading. I hated reading. Until I was older in life, and now yeah. I fucking love it. But I also Same. had I had to learn that like I can't retain things by reading it. I have to hear it. So when we're reading scripture, she reads it to me, and I listen. Yep. Or if I'm driving, I audiobook everything. I fucking love audiobooks. Yep. Having somebody read to me, it's like being a child all over again. Reading Rainbow, bro. Like let's completely run agree. I, I got like that the the audible uh, subscription that's like the most. Same. The, yes. same. And then I'm still spending 30 to $40 a month on books. I read over 300 books last year. Really? Yep. 365 that's days, 300 books. Are you the same way? Because I saw you came here, like when you guys pulled up and you were like 10 minutes, you knitted for five mm -hmm. and then you started reading. She actually likes to read, read. Yeah. I have a hard time retaining audibly. I'm winning though, because she's buying audiobooks and listening to them while she drives. Yes. I am. It, it's <laughs> taken me about eight hours to get through a two hour book because I have to keep rewinding it to hear the points to actually remember what they said. Because your mind just drifts off. Uh, yeah, I, I hear the, the voice, but I don't retain the words. Yeah, I to totally understand. We know that subconsciously, though, you do retain that. It's like people who start learning a new language and then dream in that language. Subconsciously, your brain remembers all that. Your cognitive brain might not. But they've done studies that if you listen to the language that you're trying to learn while you sleep at night on headphones, your brain will pick that up. Trying to learn Spanish here lately, and I'm doing horrible. I tried to learn French to Duolingo. So that same to try to like, and I kept a really good streak. It was like seven weeks, mm -hmm. bro. We have to talk about. The, I broke 182 <laughs> day streak. I broke. I would. I would screenshot my streak day and send it to my wife to brag. <laughs> Like, I'm on 180 days. And, you know, I can say con verde, you know, <laughs> which I think is if with green, I just said, which makes no sense. But I brought the day I forgot one day. Something happened. 
and the streak broke. And you don't care anymore. It do. broke my heart. I haven't been back on. That's exactly what happened to me. He was like, I missed one day. Fuck this. Yeah, yep. That's it. Duolingo is literally, it's on the front yeah. of my app, the stupid little and owl. I, I paid for it. So do I. Yeah. I know I deleted the service. See, now, and deleted the now app. I feel now I feel motivated. The fact that I know that I'm not alone in this Duolingo <laughs> struggle. Like, let's get back on this horse, bro. I'm gonna hold you accountable. Yeah. Go I, lose I your wanted to be able to speak French to her just so that <clears throat> Do you speak French? A little bit. I'm not as I'm not as good as I used to be. I mean, it's been almost over it's been almost fifteen years. We we spent about seven weeks trying to learn it. <clears throat> and I just wanted to be able to sleep talk her in another language just yeah. to make her day. And I got some of it, and yep. then I stopped, and now I don't remember any of it. But <clears throat> I think you need to get back on that horse. Bro. Yeah, I, okay. I yeah, probably. <laughs> I don't need your peer pressure, bro. Don't yeah, look at me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny about the streak thing, though. <clears throat> like that's funny. Now I don't feel like such no. a fucking idiot. It doesn't take much. You you got that groove, and that groove. Those um, uh, updates are little victory. Um, awards like it, rewards like hey you did this a daily achievement right i needed that little check mark because maybe up my entire day is shit but at least yeah, i learned how to say blue <laughs> <laughs> azul <laughs> that's funny yeah i really did want to learn to speak french for, I, you know what the thing is is with the with me trying to learn that is i could read it and i could Better type it, can speak it but I, I didn't practice speaking it and i felt stupid doing it and i would embarrass myself so i wouldn't try Right. It was only to her. Like of all the people that I shouldn't be embarrassed of, it's her. But like in my head, I have to do this to make her happy. Interesting. And I don't want to let that down. So I'm just not going to do it. That's something to dive in on it's with your therapist. Weird. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen my therapist in quite a while. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I got to ask, I got I to ask a few things. Okay. So the tattoos, what led you to where you are today? Oh man. How did we get here? Do you want the raw truth or do you want the bullshit answer that I give everyone? Oh, I don't want this. I, <coughs> I want. I I, I got to know. So, because I can, I've made out a few things. I see a Mjolnir. Yep. Um, and uh, then well, and I we have your under on my my temple. Okay, that's the world serpent. Yep. Um, I so I I am I am a follower of Christ. Full disclosure, we have our faith. Um, okay. However, I I went down the rabbit hole of Norse mythology hard for about twenty years. Interesting. Um, and I totally love all of it. Right. I think it's super cool. I love the stories behind it. I love the the strength and the masculine and the feminine of all of it. It all speaks to me, yep. um, which is why I have a lot of the symbology tied to me. I have runes tattooed on me, protection runes, things like that. It was okay. a big part of my life. Sure. The tattooing in a whole is uh, something I started doing when I was like nine years old, 10 years old. And I was tattooing myself. And then it happened a lot more frequently in my teenage years and then a whole lot more and from like, 17 to 30 and it was self-harm oh wow but it looks like a tattoo right so if i'm going through a mental fucking breakdown and i get a tattoo no one ever questions that shit oh he's got a new tattoo if i cut myself to be like the fuck is wrong with you right yeah. and cutting was not a thing when i was a kid and i have borderline personality disorder okay. so my tattooing started out as a way to get therapy before i knew i needed therapy it was my outlet um, and I, I can't believe I just admitted that on the podcast cause it's not something I would ever wanted to talk about, but I also don't like lying. So there's that. Um, but it, it is a, it was a form of therapy and, and for a long time, my tattoos all meant something. I could tell you probably the first 70 or 80 tattoos I had, I could tell you where I was, what I was doing when I got the tattoo, if I did it or someone else did it. Um, I could tell you the mental struggle that I was having with it. And then the cover up started. And when the cover up started, it was to cover up all of that shit. So like I processed my demons by putting them on me and then I covered them figuratively with demons. I have demons tattooed all over my body. So I have a giant one on my stomach. I have a, what side has the one with the bullet hole in it? I think my right side has one with a bullet hole in its, its head. Like I, I have a dark past. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that was my, my therapy from all of it. And now I, I don't really want to get tattooed anymore. And which is weird because I own a tattoo studio and I've got probably 400 hours of tattooing on my body because I've got covers up of covers up. And like, I, I have things that I need to get covered up and things that I want to get removed. And if I could start all over again, it would be a very different scenario. But my there's a darkness to my tattoos, so okay, but that's the answer. But as to assuming that's what you're asking, but then you brought up the Viking thing, so I, I do have 
Uh, yeah, I, I figured there had to be something there, yeah. either currently active in that re yeah. religious mindset or um, past. Well, I only have, I have one religious tattoo that is Christ about, and it was a memorial tattoo for somebody who was Catholic, and at the time I was not. Yep. Um, but other than that, I don't have any Christian tattoos on me. All my tattoos are pagan tattoos. So, so I have a tree of life on the inside of my arm. Yeah, this was this is only I got this uh, the week of my mom's funeral yeah. uh, by her tattoo artist in Iowa. It's got the tree of life and obviously the lotus flower and what have you. And I, I, I don't think I'm going to get any more um, any more tattoos either. But a good way to tie everything together, you know, over our hours here today is is talking about uh, we talked about people taking bites, how to have an impact and for you, and since you have a tattoo place, you know other tattoo artists. Well, one thing we do during the big search is we set up this trailer and professional tattoo artists will come and we will give survivors uh, an opportunity because tattooing and branding is a thing in this world. Girls get girls and boys get branded by their pimps and traffickers. Um, and professional tattoo artists will come in pro bono during these events and offer their services to cover up and redo uh, these tattoos and brandings. And I always just thought that was so cool. What a great way to take your talent, your skill, and you're not changing the globe, but you're making an impact in that one person's life in a very massive way, more than you could ever imagine. Because these are, these are brands and tattoos that are signifying another human being's ownership of you. Like how, right? Ugh, like it's just dirty. And they come to the property and do that? No. So this is this isn't happening at the ranch. I mean, it could. Um, we haven't gone there. I'm saying when we do the big search when we're in these cities. So the last couple of days in Vegas, uh, Free International, which is the organization that uh, has the MOUs with law enforcement and kind of sets up the the big search. Um, they have this huge, beautiful trailer that inside is a little studio. Um, where they can come and they'll park in the in the big parking lot at the Orleans. If you've been to Vegas, if you're familiar with the Orleans, it has this huge parking lot up front. And we are in the, if you're coming out the front door of the Orleans, front left uh, section of the parking lot gets completely taped off, roped off, given to us. And yeah, we'll have we'll have trafficking survivors come and get things covered up. It's, hmm. it's really, really. Is that something that there's a notice for, or is it just like, Hey, we have this happening tomorrow. Can you do it? Word of mouth. So word of mouth is the biggest thing. So we, no, we, I meant in terms of time frame for the artists. So like, oh, it, oh. so what I'm asking you is if you knew that you were going to do that on July 3rd of next year, Yep. how much time do you have to know that that's coming? Oh, so our big searches are like, I could tell you 2024 schedule. Yeah. So you'll know when the tattoo thing is happening. Uh -huh. Um, I have. 14 tattoo artists that work for me right now and i i am a tattoo artist yep is that uh, something that interests you uh it's something that we would love to be involved in not yeah. not as sacred rights but as to be better when we when we close up shop here like let's not let, don't let this night end without us revisiting this right well it means you have my, my phone number so we can talk oh yeah but. we can whisper sweet nothing gotcha. uh, yeah i i want to touch on the tattoo thing because that was yep. a very dark conversation uh the last seven to eight years of my tattooing changed i went from getting demons and evil and hostility to i have the word persevere i have resilient over my eyebrow i yep. have um overcome on the inside of my arm i have driven on my shoulder i stopped tattooing images on myself and started tattooing positive affirmations so that when i'm standing there with my shirt off in the morning getting ready i yep. can look at that and see all of my misery transforming into words of you fucking got this um, I, I don't know. Th that would be a, like a very long conversation, but I think that we might have to do a tattoo episode. Well, and I'm glad that you arrived there. And if I said anything, I, I'm not offended or bothered. Okay, great. No, I just, um, that's not some people ask all the time. Can we have a tattoo tour? And I'm like, no, no, you fucking can't. Right, right, right. Because yeah. it's nasty. You know, there, there was just, there was definitely some things that, that stuck out and I was, um, obviously we're all trying to figure each other out. This is the first time we've met each right. other in person. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I appreciate you opening up like that. I, I will ask about the blackout. Uh, I practiced on myself a lot as a kid. Okay. And when I was poor, this was a whole lot easier than laser removal. <laughs> okay. That's fair. So, That's fair. And it, I mean, it's chewed up and it could be a whole lot worse and it's not done. I, w I planned on going to the knee and then I planned on taking a scalpel and cutting designs into my leg 
so that it would scar over white and I would have black tattoo with white scars. But I learned after a motorcycle that accident radical. that I don't scar the way that I want. And the worst that would happen is I would have a line. And I don't want that. So that's just done. Wow. Ta-da. <laughs> I did not expect this conversation to go there. That's yep. wild, man. That's wild. I appreciate you sharing all that. Want to see something else kind of cool? I do. <laughs> you do that on purpose? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to. I have done something myself. Okay. That <clears throat> I, this has obviously never been public. In fact, the only person that ever knew uh, was my wife and my mother, which that's a different story how she even found out. Um, but I got the Prince Albert. I have one, one of those too. Yeah. Uh, did not enjoy others, did not enjoy, and by others, I mean wife. Um, bad, bad decision. The worst dis- part of that decision is that even though it was removed. Still Over, have two streams, right? Man. Yeah, that never closes. That is the worst. Mm-hmm. It's the worst. So essentially, I am in a perpetual state of my wife screaming, sit down with UP. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Turns you into a sprinkler head. It, it the worst. Yeah. It, the yeah. Worst. And nobody ever tells you that either. Poor decision. As soon as as soon as soon people are like, hey, I wanted to do this as a body piercer, I'd be like, just know that if that heals, it will never close. 1999 was a wild time. 98 for me. I've got the obligatory 90s tribal. Oh, man. Oh, let's go, Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to call you Aaron Lewis, but that works, too. Exactly. Dude, I am I am as about a cliche a 90s dude. As, There's nothing as wrong gets. with that. Uh, not, even not even a little. Not even a little. He's guys. That was the wrong side, though. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, he's got it on his neck. It's funny. I have a tribal too, but yeah. And Chinese caricatures that you I hope don't have say what it says. I don't have any of those. <laughs> I do know somebody who's got his favorite Chinese restaurant order tattooed on him, though, intentionally. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. I, I would like to eat dinner. Samesies. You okay, babe? Mm-hmm. You have anything you'd like to talk about before we're done? No. No? You sure? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, guys, remember you are the author of your own life. So grab a pen. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.